Matt Piervo. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. And welcome to Do This Week in Australia. That's right. We're all the way from up top here in Indiana. I'm going down under. Let's see what happened in Australia this week, shall we? And right off the bat here, wow, what a banger. She said yes, folks. My man actually became PM of Australia just to impress his girl. And it worked. Congrats. That looks like a happy couple. <laughs> Smart man. Combine it with Valentine's Day so you don't, you don't create an extra day of the year where you have to buy flowers and shit. <laughs> Damn, that's smart. No wonder he's PM. <laughs> Hold on. This is the day they got engaged, though. Do you guys really celebrate that with your partner? Maybe I've been messing up. Am I supposed to celebrate that? We just celebrate the day we got married. At least I assume this is an engagement. I mean, she said yes to will you marry me, not I do. This looks pretty cool. I found an old film with photos from Australia, ancient Australia, back when the convicts roamed the earth. <laughs> Somehow it looks more peaceful. I mean, look at that. Somehow it looks like a more peaceful time. What a beautiful land. Oh, that's awesome. Australian Woodstock. It's funny how this, I don't know what, what decade would this be? Like the 60s? 70s? I don't know. I should be able to know from those cars, but I really don't know. But it is kind of funny how cultures, you know, they kind of reflect like this feels almost like America in the, not that I was there, but from what I understand, they look similar to like America in the 60s. Insane Melbourne, 36 degrees, which I'm pretty sure is actually hot. Yeah, 36 degrees. That's pretty warm, right? Then this. Damn. It seems to hail a lot more in Australia than at least here in Indiana. That's rough. That is a lot of insurance claims right there. On the roofs. Well, you guys use more clay shingles, don't you? Those probably fare a lot better in hail compared to asphalt like we have here in America. They're basically potato chips. Um, but definitely some car insurance claims. This is a very rare occurrence where I live. Maybe once every few years. Going for a walk this morning, came across this. Wait, is that a, is that a Mario mushroom? <laughs> that is dope. Man, who carved that, a giant? That's pretty impressive. O'Neill sharing corruption investigation findings on the liberals. Well, to be honest, I take every kind of political thing with a grain of salt, but I'm interested to see. You know, I like to keep up on what's going on. The liberals. Honestly, I'm just trying to think, are the liberals conservative or... Because here in America, liberal... I mean, it, it usually means, like, um, left-wing. Let me see. Okay, apparently that's the center-right party. See, I knew there would be something weird. Let's see what's going on. Today, here. our government released a landmark report by Dennis Richardson, AC, who I think everyone in this chamber would agree is a person of absolutely unimpeachable integrity. Our government commissioned that report okay, in the here. face of genuine questions being raised about the integrity of contracts in our offshore processing system. Mr Richardson was asked to review the contracts and examine whether any wrongdoing had occurred. And, Speaker, the findings in this report are genuinely extraordinary. What Mr Richardson found was that under the stewardship of the Leader of the Opposition, potentially hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars were funnelled into there companies which were engaging in alleged criminal wrongdoing. No. You're telling me 
the governments are corrupt and they they send our hard work and tax dollars to their buddies. <laughs> Let me say that again, Speaker. This is. Ta I love like Parliament in Australia, and it's the same in like the UK, where people are vocal. You know what I mean? They're vocally. What? I I like that kind of discourse. Taxpayer dollars that your constituents and my constituents worked hard for, paid to the government. This guy must be guilty right here. I don't know who he is, but in the middle, he's just on his phone trying to pretend it's not happening. Government in good faith and under the leader of the opposition, hundreds of millions of dollars of it were put towards companies which are suspected of drug smuggling, arms dealing wow. and money laundering. And we know from Mr Richardson Order. that massive profits were skimmed off these contracts. Now, the member for Bruce asked me how this is possible. Order. And that I feel like if you investigate any government agency, you'll probably find corruption. But this is, doesn't this just make you sick? and other questions about this incredible report are rightly directed Member to the Leader McKeown. of the Opposition because this happened on his watch, Speaker. He set up and oversaw a system that facilitated great Order. harms Member to Australians and to people around the world. Objective. Now, Speaker, the questions that the Leader of the Opposition needs to come forward and tell us is what did he know about this and when, Order. and why does it appear that after almost a decade in positions of leadership, Order. he never asked a single question about any of it. Damn. Yeah, your guys' as politicians going hard. I kind of appreciate that. That's cool to see. Um, yeah. Any kind of government corruption or misspending of hardworking taxpayer funds makes me pretty upset. This is sort of just an interesting headline. Australians spending $7 billion a year on lotteries during cost of living crisis, which that reminds me of a headline I saw years ago about Americans. And it was it, it really stuck with me because it was so sad. It was like a survey of, you know, 100 elderly people um, and some outrageous percent of them, like 30 percent of them said, that they play the lottery and gamble as part of their retirement strategy to try to get lucky and make enough money to live for retirement. I don't know if that is what's going on here, but it's what it made me think of. This is sort of an interesting graph. Int Australian lottery turnover from 1995. I mean, you can see it's basically straight up with a dip in 2009 so financial crisis like 2008 2009 financial crisis that's interesting it went down there um but also you have to realize seven billion dollars ain't what it was you know three years ago and or oh my god 2018 wasn't three years ago it ain't what it was six years ago <laughs> um if you adjusted this for inflation, it might actually be less. I bet it would be less. And so it would actually coincide more like with this financial crisis, a little bit more. Because since 2018, 2019, how much inflation has been racked up? I mean, compounded, what would it, what would it be? It would be like 22% or something, maybe more, probably more, 25%. So really, you take 25% off and would actually be going down just an interesting thought it's one rock melon i don't even know what that is how much could it cost no idea if i had to guess maybe a dollar well okay australian dollars maybe two dollars 1090 wait that that's what you call cantaloupe 11 bucks for cantaloupe how are you supposed to eat healthy on a budget? 11 bucks for cantaloupe. God, that is disgusting. That is really sickening. This is an interesting post and thread about, is Coles allowed to ask what's under my shirt when it's just my hernia? Man, that is a bad look. And apparently he lifted up his shirt and said, have a look. <laughs> yeah, that is a really bad look. I think the answer to the question is they are allowed to. Should they? No. Should you never shop there again? Probably. 
this is funny. Um, a manager called to apologize and asked to come apologize in person and offer a $100 gift voucher. That's because this PR nightmare is going to cost them a lot more than $100. A lot more than $100. Something like this. It's, it's actually really interesting in the times we live in where something like this can go viral on the internet. This very well may cost... You know, it could... It could how many people are seeing this post, including the people watching this video? I mean, it might lose them out on 5,000 people making a trip to Kohl's that week. Uh, so it might lose them half a million dollars, this blunder. So there you go. By the way, just to clarify, when I said, could they ask you? Yes. I'm not saying you have to show them. No, no, no. You definitely don't have to show them what's under your shirt, especially if it's a hernia. Um, leave that to the police. Uh, no, no manager of a Coles can have you stripped down or really do anything for that matter. I've been staring at this post. I don't know what this means. Let's be honest, guys. We're lying to the world. What is that? That is a weird looking bird. These arseholes during egg laying season are the true terror of the skies, not the magpies. I had the unfortunate experience of accidentally walking through a nesting ground in Palm Beach. These things lay eggs in the beach. Only to have two of them chase me down the beach. <laughs> and he had to hide himself underwater. <laughs> that is insane. To top it off, they have little knives in their wings. And if you needed one more reason not to go to Coles. The new Easy Melt chocolate buttons no longer melt. <laughs> you had one job. I have never heard of chocolate buttons, and I didn't know they had to melt. But I'm outraged. That looks like slop on the right. It also kind of looks like pulled pork, which I love. But it's not pulled pork. So it looks like slop. <laughs> A little update to the Barnaby Joyce situation. Apparently the planter box that he passed out on <laughs> now has a plaque commemorating the incident in memory of Barnaby Joyce being totally F arse drunk that time. <laughs> Only in Australia, folks. Only in Australia. And what have I been telling you guys for months, years at this point? Enjoy KFC while it lasts before it goes to shit. Because here in America, it sucks. And you can see, this is a new low KFC tender. Look at that compared to the can. Barely more than a nugget. Smaller than some nuggets. Definitely skinnier. And they're calling that a chicken tender. They should have to sell it by the pound. I'm so sick, because this happens here in America too, of ordering chicken tenders, usually from a fast food place. And you get that. You get four of those. Y'all are going to have to explain this one. Property damage. Broken window. Did a meteorite fly through the window? What, what? Reminder for Sydney residents, it's asbestos bin tonight. Um, I don't know the story behind this, but I need to. A little bit warm on the site today. You're not kidding. Holy shit. This reminds me of, you know, I watch a lot of disc golf. I'm sure half of you have never even heard that term before. But they have an Australian Open in one year. Paul McBeth was out there with his putter, and he was able to fold it in half, a frisbee. <laughs> Normally it would be stiff. 
And it was so hot, he could fold it in half. And look at this. Oh, my God. It's time to call off work. Excessive multi-buys. This is as bad as it gets. Yeah. Don't you just hate these things? You go to buy one thing. I mean, it works. It works sometimes. Sometimes it works on me. It, it pisses me off, but it works. I go to buy one, and it costs, you know, one of them costs $10, but if you buy three, it's 15 or something. So you got to buy three. These are fascinating, though. Kit Kat cookie dough? Are you kidding me? This is amazing. I've never seen any type of, like, Kit Kat flavor. These look amazing. Why don't we have this? Dude, this whoa, week whoa, whoa. <laughs> this week in Australia is over. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I didn't mean to play that, by the way, if you're confused. Um, I'll see you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.